What is going on, YouTube? Sticky back at it. I am joined by Big Puss. I don't know if you can hear that. We're hanging out, and we are getting prepped and excited. See you later, Big Puss. For the newest season of Cosmic Crucible. And I uh, wanted to get this video done a little bit earlier than I actually did. The season actually, as of recording, starts tomorrow. About 24 hours. Uh, but, you know, real life, real schedule, baby and all that stuff. Uh, better late than never, I suppose. So, let's go ahead and get into it. I want to go over my thoughts on the new season and what I am planning to do uh, as far as defense goes. Uh, now, something that I always kind of approach in the way of defense, I tend to lean more heavy on the offensive side, especially initially in the season. I want to make sure I have the tools that uh, I think I might need available to me. We'll see how everything shakes off uh, or shakes out. I'm sure that my defense in a week or two is going to look different than it does right now. So, uh, you know, the, the meta kind of settles in relatively quickly. We get a good sense of what we're going to need, uh, what our pain points are, who we need to pull off defense and have his offensive tools. Uh, and then on the alternative side, if we have way too much on offense uh, after this first week, well, then I know I need to beef up the defense a little bit. Uh, so with all that being said, Let's go ahead and get into it. And I think the most important thing here is we take a look at the global rule, Symbiotic 6. So on defense and offense, Symbiote characters count as Superior 6 and Sinister 6. So that's super exciting. I think that's fun. Uh, global rule, I think that's going to breathe a whole lot of life into a lot of the Sinister 6 characters that we sometimes weren't using. Uh, shockers coming to mind. Um, allowing some more flexibility as far as building teams around getting those, you know, needing superior six characters to bring out the best in their kits. Uh, some of those uh, Sinister Six characters uh, along with the Symbiotes. So I think that's going to be a lot of fun. I think that's going to lead to a lot of theory crafting and a lot of interesting options on offense once we get into this. But uh, let's keep going here. So superior six characters, so that includes Symbiotes now. Uh, on successful attack, bear yourself for 15% of max health. Cool. When successfully attacked, remove revive once from the attacker. So that is a big difference from last season. Uh, so we're going to keep that in mind as we're building our defense. Uh, last season, on successful attack with a superior six character, you strip revive once from the enemy team. Now, when a superior six character gets hit, they are going to strip revive once from the attacker. So that's uh, an important distinction we need to make. Uh, moving on, on spawn, gain defense up, uh, and then on defense, uh, all characters, 20% max health, 10% damage, uh, and then completed attacks will give an exhaust. Uh, now, this I'm not totally sure about. I should know, having access to the test server, but I don't. After each completed attempt, and when, and when revived, gain a stack of exhaust, cancel combats will not add exhaust. Uh, this is what it says in the blog. It does not currently say that in-game. Uh, I don't know if that's going to apply in the live season. I, I guess it will. I don't know if it's a typo in game, but who knows? We'll see how that plays out. But in any event, I wanted to get that global rule out of the way because that's going to color a little bit of our choices on defense. A lot of bit of our choices on defense. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, guys. So starting off, we have room one, invulnerable. On defense and offense, Raider and Skirmisher characters gain plus 200% extra damage when under 50% health. So I am going to opt for Extreme with Dermamo. Uh, and the reason I'm doing that and keeping an eye on the ISOs here, so I have Raider on Rogue. Raider or Skirmisher, I think for her, totally fine. Raider was already on this account, so I'm just using that as opposed to spending additional blue ISOs. But Skirmisher might even be a better pick. Uh, obviously Raider on Gambit and Nightcrawler. Uh, I'm going Skirmisher on Dormammu. And then Forge, I don't know how much Forge is going to make a difference here uh, as far as damage below 50%, especially at my level Forge. He just kind of dies. But the reason I'm going this route is because of the uh, global rule. And that being that uh, when successfully attacked, remove revive ones from the attacker. So one of the reasons why this was not great last season was because people were just bringing Superior 6 into it. Superior 6 went super fast, uh, did a bunch of damage to the team off the gate, immediately stripped all the revive onces from them, uh, and then they blew you up like normal. So Dormammu here did not make a whole lot of sense last season. Now, however, Superior 6 are all going to go, 
and then it's your team, uh, your turns, uh, your teams, excuse me, turn to go. Uh, and so what that means is that when they blow up your forge and they will blow up your forge, at least at, at my investment level and keeping in mind, this is all my roster specific. I approach this as someone that it is very rare that I'm not doing quite large punch ups and I generally can't rely on my defense to hold the line. I kind of have to go more offensive. Uh, otherwise, I don't have the tools I need to get it done. That's just my experience. Yours might differ depend or, uh, depending on how your roster looks. But even if they come out of the gate here and they kill Forge, Forge has not yet got a chance to take a turn and uh, do an attack off uh, to an en enemy superior six character. So he still has revive once. So they kill him and he pops back up. So they effectively have to kill him twice in order to get that done. So I am going to go this route, you know, you know as you guys know, if Forge gets his ultimate off, this team becomes much more difficult. So I am going to attempt this, uh, at least for, for week one here, and see how this goes. Uh, see if we can get those revive onces on Forge, maybe cause some issues. I don't think this is going to stop a Superior Six from rolling my team, my personal team, over, just based on their, their power level here. But I do want to give it a go. If Dormammu ends up not really making a difference here, uh, efficiency-wise, we'll see about that. Uh, I'm probably just going to go back to full extreme with Rogue. Now, on one hand, I do like, if we do drop Dormammu, I do like Sunspot here. Um, he does give them a damage bonus. He gives them offense up on spawn, yada, yada. Uh, so that's very interesting to me. However, Cyclops, I don't know. I might go Cyclops. My Cyclops is way bigger than my free-to-play Sunspot. Uh, and also that Cyclops passive, when a character dies, he immediately gives, a, gives ability energy to Forge. Forge can pop off. Uh, or I'm sorry, turn meter to Forge, and Forge can pop off and, and do what Forge needs to do. So I'm not totally decided on that yet if we end up making that swap. But for now, I am going to run Dermamo into this room. Uh, all right, so room two is Mystic Healthcare. On defense and offense, Mystic characters gain plus 20% drain per negative effect. Uh, and those negative effects include bleed, offense down, trauma, and disrupt or disrupt. So I'm going to run my Darkhold here. Here's the deal. We don't have that many great Mystic characters um, that you'd want as a defensive option here, to be totally honest with you. I don't anticipate needing Darkhold on offense, so I'm just going to go ahead and drop them here. They are a, a, a B tier, maybe even a C tier defensive team, if we're being totally honest with ourselves. The counters that worked last season are going to continue to work here. Um, but they do require a pretty... Uh, serious counter you know you can't just bring anything into here and necessarily be successful you need to plan ahead uh so i do like dark hold on defense now you can run full dark hold if you wanted scarlet witch doesn't do a ton but you could do that uh you could put quicksilver in here i'm opting to not put quicksilver in here the main reason being that the the common tangle web counter that you see go into this quicksilver doesn't really change that you just adjust uh you know your attack order you get a trauma stun on him off the bat and it's a done deal anyway so i'd rather sure up another team knowing that he's not gonna do that much here i'm dropping noir in not that i expect noir to do much of anything but i do have a heavy investment in him from last season because i was using him in that room one so i figured i'd drop him uh in there maybe you know he takes a couple turns blows a few charges off of weaver Listen, I don't expect this to do anything uh, except, you know, pull specific counters into it and be I would, not even an efficiency sink, but pull specific counters. So I'm dropping Noir in there. We'll see how that goes. Uh, with that being said, as far as this room goes, the gain 20% drain per negative effect, that's cool. And that could be a nightmare. Uh, I think that will shut down a lot of the lesser counters that people were getting away with in the past with that drain being there. Um, or at least, you know, cause them a little bit more problem that being said if you're bringing tangle web into this like a lot of us do uh you can't drain if you're not landing your attacks and weaver's gonna make sure you're not landing any of your attacks so i don't see this being a big room or a big deal so i'm just gonna go ahead and drop dark hold in here with noir because i have him built all right room three when it rains uh oh that's not how do we do that i guess i clicked here and didn't realize it all right uh, when it rains, so on defense and offense, all characters, when a positive effect is applied to a character, increase the duration of all positive effects on allies of that character by plus one up to a max of three. When a negative effect is applied to a character, increase the duration of all negative effects on all allies of that character by one up to a max of three. So I am going to go ahead and off the bat here, run Infinity Watch, and I am going to be dropping Moon Dragon for Quicksilver. 
Um, the only reason I'm doing that is Moondragon does not do a ton on the team. I mean, at best, she gets that special off uh, and can strip buffs and heal them up a little bit, which is, I guess, nice. Um, Gamora and Nebula are going to go fast on this team, so they're going to be extending safeguard uh, on the rest of the, the squad there and all those uh, defense up and immunity, everything they spawn with there. Um, Quicksilver, I think, just makes this a little bit more difficult of a team. He does get buffs on his own. Uh, which are going to then extend the everything else for the rest of the team, which is kind of nice. Uh, he also applies negative effects to the enemy team on his basic, special, basic if they don't have anything. Uh, he'll apply the disrupt, I believe. Special applies negative effects and ultimate applies negative effects. And he just kind of shores this team up a little bit. Um, I don't expect this to be anything more than uh, an efficiency sink like it was last season. I'm not sure that Quicksilver is going to remain here for me if I find... He's a great offensive tool, but he takes a lot of turns, right? And that's difficult on offense because it, it hurts your efficiency, but he's an amazing character. If I end up needing him on offense, I end up needing him on offense and I'll pull him off and we'll use him there. Uh, or if it's just not working out and this isn't doing much of anything, we'll go ahead and pop Moon Dragon back in there and maybe we'll place him on another defensive team here. But I think for now, that's where I will leave him and uh, we'll see how this goes. I don't expect this to be much of a big deal. Uh, Infinity Watch and other teams that get safeguard and all is just going to be a little bit more annoying, but that's my play for right now. Okay, room four, Spiritual Energy. This is a pretty serious room that you're going to need to account for. Anytime a character gains energy from an active ability, they gain plus one uh, extra energy. When a character when an enemy character dies, all characters gain plus one ability energy and ultimate abilities cost plus three more ability energy. So I'm going to run secret defenders into here. Now I'm going to run secret defenders with Captain America, I think, to get started to see how that goes. Um, a lot of the counters that you would bring into a uh, secret defenders team revolve around them having access to their ultimate abilities off the bat. So we're thinking about like New Warriors is, is a good example there. Uh, if New Warriors can't apply that trauma uh, from uh, the Fire Lady, all that stuff, uh, they have some, some problems for sure. And Secret Defenders, on the other hand, have pretty devastating specials. They're devastating all around, but their specials are, are also quite devastating. Uh, so I think they're going to do a great job here as a defensive team. Uh, Captain America, the only reason I'm bringing him in here is because he generally, normally, would ultimate on his first turn. This Captain America, assuming he survives, which I have a two-diamond G18 cap, but we'll see if he survives, uh, is going to special first turn. That special is going to give everyone defense up, they're going to get the uh, deflects on spawn, yada yada. He's going to generate ability energy, and when a character... Uh, Generates ability energy from an active uh, ability, they gain plus one energy. So maybe he throws that to Robbie and Robbie gets to ult a little bit sooner. Black Cat gets to re rewind a little bit sooner. I don't know. I'm going to give this a go. I do not have my uh, Doctor Strange built up and I don't plan on doing so. So uh, we're going to drop Captain America in here. I don't know if the, he's the best pick. Uh, Fury is kind of interesting because Fury, instead of summoning his minions, is going to do his special first turn, give them speed up. That's kind of interesting. Um, but for now, I'm going to run Cap in here. I'm going to see how that goes. And uh, I'm interested uh, and excited to see after week one uh, whether or not that was a good pick or, or a dumb decision. Could be either. All right. Then we get into uh, some teams and some defenses that I am less thrilled about. However, that being said, uh, and as I said previously, I tend to go more offensive heavy. Um, I don't think I am personally where I'm at going to be able to win with my defense and turtling. Uh, if you guys like to turtle and you win crucibles like that, that's cool. More power to you. If that's the case, you're not going to be running something like this here. Uh, but this is robotic double uh, on defense and offense. Tech characters, whenever a tech character uses an ultimate ability, revive an ally tech character at 100% health. Uh, whether or not they revive with Exhausted, we will find out. It no longer says that here. I don't know what the functionality in game is currently, but we will find out. Now, if you are a Turtle player and you think you can get away without Superior 6 uh, on uh, offense, then Superior 6 is probably what you want to drop here. Some sort of combination uh, of that because they have a lot of tech characters on the team and that could be an absolute nightmare. I envision myself needing all of those two 
all of those tools on offense. So I'm not doing that here. Uh, I'm for now uh, going to throw in um, the NA team with Fury uh, just to give uh, some speed up, hopefully to uh, Colson there, a little bit extra turn meter uh, from Ronan going to Colson and hoping... I don't know. I don't expect this to do much of anything to be totally honest. This is just sort of a budget option for me. Um, if I don't end up needing Kestrel, uh, Kestrel could be interesting here with Fury, uh, with Colson. Maybe we can ping somebody out after that Colson ultimate, uh, putting defense down on character. Uh, I could see value from Infinity War Iron Man giving a damage boost to Kestrel. I don't know. Off the bat, I am hesitant to put Kestrel in here. Now, those two are both techs, so that's nice depending on how... Uh, that revive function actually works in the live season. Uh, but Kestrel is such a useful tool on offense that I'm not committed to that. Again, we'll reevaluate depending on what I have left over uh, after the first week and who I'm not using on offense. So if I don't need her, maybe I do drop her in here. Uh, but for now, I'm going NA, Colson, Fury. I don't expect this to stop anyone, much like it really didn't stop anyone last season. But there you go. I got to put something here, and I am kind of short on good options. Uh, room six is health insurance. So that is on turn, characters remove all positive effects from self and heal plus 10% from, of max health for each positive effect removed. Um, this is just going to be a filler team for me. Uh, and that's Gamma. Again, not excited about this. When these rooms, when I get better teams built up or the, the meta settles a little bit uh, and I figure out what I actually need on offense, five and six are absolutely the first rooms that are going to get changed, no doubt in my mind. Gamma's not doing much of anything. Uh, the removing positive effects. Listen, it's all about Red Hulk hopefully staying alive long enough to ultimate and they screw something up. This isn't going to, I don't think, stop anything like a New Warriors or anything like that. They're still going to get steamrolled. But again, I have to have something placed here. Um, and I don't know, maybe they misplay or, or whatever. Probably not. But I need something here in the meantime. Uh, if I end up removing Dermamu from this team, I doubt Dermamu is going to be needed for offense. I don't think right now. Uh, so I would probably just do that same thing uh, where we remove She-Hulk like we were doing last season, drop Dermamu in here, give everyone a revive once. Again, still you can kind of run that over with New Warriors anyway, so I don't see that being that, that big of a deal. But I'm kind of limited on options at the moment. And uh, like I said, I enjoy playing more offense heavy. I like having the tools. It's more fun to me. And I have not had any success against the people that I've been playing uh, against running a defense heavy lineup because they just they steamroll me they have more options than me and uh, they end up just beating us anyway so my hope is always that I play super clean on offense and they screw up a little bit on efficiency or dropped attack or whatever uh, and that's kind of where I've been finding myself getting my wins uh, at least up here where I'm playing so that is my lineup at the moment uh, I think there's a lot of alternatives you could do here uh, I think if you're really willing to run superior six on defense, uh, that's going to be uh, a terror. If you want to, you know, I know some people and we did towards the end of last season, split up unlimited and uh, extreme putting gambit with unlimited team just to cause some issues. I, I did not like the way that played out for me. So I don't believe that I'll be doing that this season. Um, so I think for right now, I think this is a pretty decent at least what I can what I can rustle up with my roster, pretty decent defense. But as always, this is just beginning of the season stuff, right? Like the meta is going to settle in. My rooms in two weeks, I'm sure, are going to look way different. Uh, some very smart people are going to come up with some very creative counters to uh, uh, all these different rooms. And yeah, we're going to see how it goes. But I, for one, am excited. I'm looking forward to the interesting compositions we're going to be able to make out of the Symbiotes and the Sinister Six and Superior Six, breaking those teams apart, creating unique counters uh, and ways to address some of the stuff that we're going to see on defense. So I am excited for the season. I hope you guys are as well. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Let me know in the comments what you guys are doing this season. Do you think I'm totally off base with this defense? Uh, what are you guys running? Uh, especially interested in, in how you guys plan on using your secret defenders team. Uh, who's going to be in that, that fifth spot for you? You running something like Captain America. You're going to do Nick Fury. You're going full SD to give the turn meter to uh, what's your name here. And I'm also interested to see what you guys are doing with Super Scroll. So Super Scroll is an offensive character, uh, an offensive tool, uh, not character, offensive tool that I like having available to me. Uh, it proved very useful last season, but 
makes a lot of these defenses a lot tougher. So I'm curious to see whether or not you guys are saving him for offense or you want to run him on defense. In any event, let me know in the comments, guys. Thank you so much for watching the video. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, again, thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down if you hate it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already. And I do wish you all the very best of luck in the upcoming Cosmic Crucible season. See you guys in the next one. Stay sticky. Bye.